and we're back once again this is dominate the day god's way hosted by me best-selling author sadan long now i wear a lot of different hats and one of the other hats that i wear is staff developer and trainer so this week in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and in the staff development that i've been running we've been talking about vulnerability and honesty and what I'm finding is that we all have a little bit of trouble being honest. Now, what that looks like is how do I really connect with people? How do I really let people know what's going on? Because whether it be in professional settings or whether it be in the church community, most of us have built this big image or people have helped us build this big image that we try to live up to this image of perfection, this image of because you have an education or because you have a title, because you're saved, that you don't have any problems, that you don't go through anything. So what happens is that when we move out into the community or we move out to try to be effective, people already have these preconceived notions about who we are. And they think that we don't know or that we can't relate or we wouldn't understand. And because they built us up so high, Oftentimes, we won't admit that we really do understand. That we really do understand what it's like to be broke. That we really do understand what it's like to be alone. That we really do understand what it's like to feel like you're too big, too short, too small, too fat. And that's holding us back. Because not only can we not minister properly or lead properly, we can't get the help that we need. See, when the standard is really high, then the fall is really great. But most people actually fall. Most people actually fail one, two, three, four times. And going through that by yourself is very lonely. And going through that without any help, it takes you too long to get back to where you need to be because you're trying to do it alone. You know, you find yourself sitting at home having pity parties because you think you're the only person who's failing. Because you think you're the only person that's lonely. Because you think you're the only person that is going through. And when you go out in public, you give this persona of, I don't have no problems because I got Jesus. Or, I don't have no problems because I'm the supervisor. But what you'll find is, if you start to humble yourself, if you start to just be a little more willing to expose your truth, that you'll be able to get help. And not only will you get help, but you'll be able to minister and be more effective in helping others. Because now, they'll see you for who you really are. They'll see you as an overcomer. But it's hard to tell somebody to do something great or that God is great without showing them how he's been great without showing him how he's been good to you. And in order to show him how he's been good to you, you have to reveal your bad times. Now, people listen to me on the show, and they're often like, man, I couldn't believe that you said that, or you couldn't believe that you revealed that. I couldn't believe that you shared that. But the reason I'm able to share those things is because I don't live in that space anymore. I'm able to share that I've been fired a couple times. Why? Because I've moved past it. I've conquered the shame and the fear of people finding out to find out that other people have been fired and come back to. If you really research your heroes, if you really research the people that you follow in leadership, the people that you serve under, you'll find that they got failures too. You'll find out that they got flaws and they got fears. And the only difference between you and them is that they didn't let it stop them. They didn't let it hold them back. They were able to overcome it. So what I want to share with you today is some ways to overcome your fear. Now, the first thing is to find a group of people that you can trust. Find a group of people that aren't stuck. Find some people who have actually admitted to where they're going through at. You look at, for example, people who are hooked on drugs. They go to AA, and the first thing they do in AA is they say, I'm an alcoholic. So find people who fit the 
same kind of profile that you have so that you can share in a safe space, so that you can share somewhere where there is no judgment, there is no shame, and there aren't a bunch of people hiding their truth. And then the second thing is daily confess your new identity. Daily consecrate yourself. Daily tell yourself that you are worthy, that you do deserve it, that you are the head, that you are not the tail, that you are not a loser, that because you failed does not make you a failure. So that it gets in your spirit and you start to develop confidence. See, I failed. But I found out that failure is not the end. You may be down, but you're not dead. So because you're not dead, you can rise again. You can make your journey better, but you have to admit that you need help. That's the solution for this week. I'm Sadan Long. This solution has been brought to you by Sadan Long Solutions, coaching believers to the best versions of themselves. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and you can always go to SedanLawn.com. Now, each and every week, I promise you, impactful people with great stories. And this week, I am not going to let you down. Our guest today is a teenage dynamo. She is the founder of a non-for-profit organization. She is a motivational speaker, and she is also about to graduate from high school. So, Dominate Nation... Please welcome Aaliyah Stewart. Hello, everyone. Hey, how you doing today? Pretty good. All right. So, like I said, you are literally doing a bunch of great things at a very young age. Yes. Were you always driven like this? Well, not until I accepted the calling that I had on my life. Okay. So, how old were you when you did that? I was 14. Um, it was December of 2014. And I was sitting at home, and I was just thinking about, like, you know, God had put me through so much mm -hmm. because I knew my test was, you know, going to become my testimony. Okay. So I knew I had to continue to go through those things and continue to, to pray about it. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest gift my mother gave me as a child was the gift of knowing God. Okay. And I feel like any gift that she's given me is not better than that gift because it helped me at a time where I didn't know myself, where I didn't know my purpose, my plan. So I think once I started to trust God and stop running away, you can't run away from God for long. It, it doesn't yeah. work. So finally when I was like, God, you know, I'm here, I, I need to know what is it that you're trying to tell me. That's when I, I have my faith, and my faith has always been my strong point. Okay, so 14 years old, just a normal average kid, so how do you start to communicate to people that I'm gonna do something that nobody's doing? Well, <clears throat> I first called my aunt and I was asking her because she works for Cisco and mm -hmm. she's a tax analyst, so I was asking her like, you know, well, how do I do this? What's the way to go? And she was like, oh my gosh, well, you know, we get a name, we started like that, you give me your goal and your vision. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is you have to write your vision out and make it plain in order for it to happen. Okay. So I've learned that in order for things to happen in decency and order, you have to write it out uh -huh. and pray about it first. So my aunt, of course, told me to pray, and then I was like, well, I want to give away scholarships in okay. honor of my brothers. And, of course, when I told my teachers at my school, at first they were like, you can't do it. But I told them I walked by faith and not by sight. All right. So it was just for me, the legal part, I had God placed people in my life to be able to help me with that part, you know, get incorporated, get my name, get my tax ID. So it was like people that were in place where I didn't have to really stress out about it. Okay. So you, you brought up your brothers. So they're kind of the inspiration for this, right? Yes, my brothers are like everything for this. I do this every day that I live, I live for them. Okay. So are you are you are you comfortable talking about how you of got course. to this point? Okay. Of course. Um in two thousand and seven my sixteen year old brother was killed. Um this is my mom's son. It was always me and him mm -hmm. and my mom will always say we all we get. So um when he was killed it was like I felt I was shielded from the world before. But mm -hmm. then after that I had to grow up and be a big kid because it was like I was the only child now, it was okay. just me by myself, you know? And then my mom, she was married at the time, so her husband had a son, but we never did the stepbrother, stepsister thing. Okay. You know, so that's always been my brother. And he came in, and so he had me going into my teen, and then my other brother had me as a little kid. All right. So this brother saw me just grow up into, you know, 
getting into high school and just everything. So he was there for that part. And then he was killed in 2014, okay. and he was 20. And I just knew that I just couldn't understand. Right. I was like, God, what is it? But I can say the biggest part to me being able to move on is having peace. Okay. Peace past all understanding to where, you know, no one can move me, no one can shake me. And forgiving the people who killed my brothers. I all think right. that was the key to, okay. to being able to do it. So forgiveness is extremely important. Yes. So was it hard to forgive? No. Okay. It wasn't hard for me to forgive because I feel like God forgives me for the sins I commit daily. So how can I not forgive a man for a sin he commit when he can still make it to heaven? Kings. Amen. So why start a foundation? Because I seen that there were so many young people that had been through what I've been through that cannot handle it like me. Okay. And I realized everyone's normal is not my normal. You All know, right. my mom she. She protected me from the world, but she also gave me tough love. Okay. So at 11, I was making, I was cooking my food. I was washing my clothes. I was clean, like I was just doing stuff that somebody in their teens would be doing. Right. And I absolutely appreciate the fact that I was doing that because to be in a senior in high school now, and there's so many people that don't know how to wash their clothes or cook them a, a home-cooked meal, and I'm just looking like, how do you live like that? Yeah, like, what are you doing? You know, by 16, I was going to pay the Nipsco bill. I've been doing grocery shopping since I was 14, so it was like, I, I just couldn't understand. So I felt like I had to do something that would reach out to, to the youth because I know it's, it's different for some people because they feel like, you know, I don't have to forgive. And you don't have to forgive, you know, but then again, you do. I learned that I didn't want somebody to have control over my life. Okay. In 2017, I knew that I, nobody could have control over my life. That's why I told God. Um, the young man was 15 when he killed my first brother. Mm -hmm. And I told God that I wanted to be 15 when I became at peace with him. Okay. So I've reached out to the young man that killed my brother. Like, we've talked. I told him that I do not hate you. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that. Because I actually want to thank him. Because if he wouldn't have did that act, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Right. Who knows what I, I would be doing. So I feel like it has helped me to help other people. And people always ask, well, would you bring your brothers back? And I, and I always say no. Because I take their two lives and I'm able to save someone every time I go out and speak. And I feel like that's the greatest gift of all for someone to feel encouraged and for someone to feel like they know their purpose now. So it all works together. Yes. Okay, so what kind of things does the foundation do for kids? Well, we do a lot. Um, we offer community service hours. Mm -hmm. I just became the president of the intergenerational program for South Shore Nursing Home in Gary. So I give and I have given away over the summer at least 50 hours. Okay. So the young people, like, they really love that because community service, I always say, is so important. Like, and I have fun with my community service. In the mm -hmm. nursing home, we do talent shows, we do birthday parties, we do baseball, we do Olympics. So it's not like uh, where well, you push an old people around and you're just like, oh, I'm here. So it's really interactive. You, you get to interact with them. So I feel like that's the most important definition and meaning behind intergenerational, mingling, you know, the, in the generations together. And then we do a lot of um, events like fashion shows and charity games and different things like that. Like I feel like, like I said with my friends, I try to introduce them to things that they wouldn't see on a regular. I try to be that friend. You know, I want to be able to take you to the White House and then I want to be able to take you to the projects. But I want you to be able to act the same everywhere you go. Right, be comfortable in so, the space. So, you know, so I just want to be that friend that shows new opportunities because I'm blessed to have the opportunities that I have. So I want to, you know, share them with everyone. Okay, so how does a person balance being in high school, being a teenager, shopping for groceries, and running a foundation? Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> I can say that if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I give him the glory every day because it is so hard. But mm -hmm. I always remember that God gives his toughest battles to the strongest people. So I'm grateful because I don't complain. I feel like. If I wasn't doing this, then I'd be like, God, give me something to do. Mm -hmm. So I just balance it out. I pray every day. You know, sometimes I don't even remember what I had on the day before because my mind is just like... Racing. Yeah. Okay. So what does your day look like? I mean, what time are you getting up? Well, <laughs> I'm supposed to get up at 6.50. Okay. But I normally don't get up to like 7. Then I get up, get ready. I go pick up my friends. Then I go to school, okay. and I'm in school till 6 o'clock. 
Right. And then, so from 7.45 to 6, I'm at school. And then finally I get home at like 6.15. My mom needs me to go to the grocery store. I'm on my way to the grocery store. Or I'm in the house trying to finish this class for night school. Okay. Or sometimes I have a speaking event to where I have to leave school early. And then, yeah, I don't get home and like rest until like 11. Wow. And then back up the next day doing the same thing. So. Is it hard to balance the, I mean, obviously there's a lot of adulation because, I mean, there's newspaper articles, there's videos, and then just being normal? I don't think I'm normal. <laughs> I think I'm far from normal. Um, I don't know. Like, I think when, I, the first time I felt like, ooh, when I went on Wendy City Live, I hid in my room for like, I tried to hide for like three days. I didn't go to school. I didn't go outside because everyone was like attacking me. Mm -hmm. like, everyone was like, wow, like, you know, I would go to the grocery store or like, I stay in the grocery store mm -hmm. or other stores and people would be like, hey, you're I am them. And I'm like, I have a name. Like, <laughs> I don't know my name. <laughs> and so it was like, people would just stop me. But I didn't feel like, I don't know, I just felt weird mm -hmm. because I didn't want people to take the big picture away from me. Like, you know, when people ask me, well, you did great. And I'm like, no, it was God. It wasn't me. I'm just living. I'm like, I'm just doing what he wants me to do. This is not, you know. So I think that's the only part. But, like, I, my head's not big about it. I just feel like you have to remain humble. What does it profit the, a man to gain the world but to lose his soul? So I just feel like I stay humble. That's Stay grounded. Yeah. Okay, even though you own national television. Yeah. Stay that's grounded. It. You know? That's a cool thing. So how much high school we got left? Two weeks. November 10th is my last day. Two weeks of high school left. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so you going to miss it? No. No, not at all. Can't look back. All right. So it's... I only look ahead. Can't look back. Okay. So as a high school student, I mean, are you, you in normal everyday classes? or? Well, yes. Um, I have advanced classes. Some classes are advanced, but... I wasn't the kid to do AP classes. Mm -hmm. It's not my thing. I can say I'm smart with other things, but when it comes to schoolwork, it's like, hold on now. Especially math. But like my other subjects, I like, I can average an A or B, but math is like. Struggle with that. Yes. So when you go out and you're speaking to kids, I mean, what's, what are some of the things that you're trying to part upon them? <clears throat> well, number one, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Okay. I try to always explain that to them and then believing in your potential and your purpose and knowing you have one. I feel like if you don't know that you have potential, you will never understand your purpose. So I try to express that to them and then about friends, you know. I never knew I had a friend until I realized Jesus was my only friend. Okay. So I have friends, but like God is like, wow, that's He's there to the end. To the end. So I try to express those things to them. But it's always funny when I go see like, I just spoke at um, Purdue Northwest this week, and I'm talking, and then I'm like, you know, well, now that I got that out the way, by the way, I'm 17, and, like, literally their mouth was like, you're what? So everybody kept asking me, like, how old are you again? Like, because everyone couldn't believe it. So I think that's, like, always cool, because the young people, they listen to me. It's so funny to me. They don't listen to the adults. Well, when I get up there, they're like, they're all listening. So I think that's really cool. I love it. Yeah, because they can identify with you. I mean, you look like them. You're not much taller than them. God didn't bless me with height. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he gave you a lot of other skills. Yes. So, so now you spoke at Purdue Northwest, and you give away scholarships. Yes, I do. So how does that work? Because you're still in high school, so you're yes. putting people in college. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first two scholarships that I gave away was to Brianna Smith and Krishna Spino. And that was my freshman year of high school. And they were graduates from class of 2014, 2015, there we go. Okay. And it was $500 for both. Okay. And I was just like, I was nervous, but like, I was excited, because I'm like, whoa, whoa. And so a lot of people, like a lot of teachers was like, hey, you're the kid that was up there giving away. I'm like, yes, that's me. And so I always get like, how are you giving scholarships out on like, I just pray, and I just, you know, it's something, but it's not a lot, but it's just, it's, it I mean, helps. It helps. Absolutely I've been told that it helps. it helps. So I think it's pretty good. Like, the people that I like, so that's like a good feeling when you go out to your mailbox and they're, you're like, oh, they didn't forget about me. 
Right, so they're grateful. So how do you qualify for a scholarship? Well, you have to have a GPA of a 2.5, but I'm like, I understand, you know, mm -hmm. because for me, I think why I didn't exceed in high school as much as I could have is because of the trauma that I was going through, mm -hmm. you know, through my life. So it was just like I was settling. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people don't settle. Okay. I just was like, look, I'll take this seat and get out of here because mm -hmm. it was passing, you right. know, it's not failing. But I always feel like you can't settle. So I tell people that I'm like, learn from me. Don't settle. Um, then you need to write an essay on who my brother was. Okay. So my foundation is called the ASW Foundation, which mm -hmm. stands for Anthony Samuel White. And that was my 16-year-old brother that was killed. Mm -hmm. So I tell them to, you know, to, to write an essay on if you could stop the violence in your community or make a change, how would you? And then they have to do that. But I don't pick the person because okay. that's bias, of course. Right. So it's really, it's not a lot you have to do. Just 2.5, have a college acceptance letter, and write an essay. Okay, so is it too late to turn in letters for this coming school year? No, we actually don't reach out and do it until um, like March. Okay. And then I accept them in April, and then they get graded. Okay, so for people at home, you got time, start composing your letter, and where do they send it to? They can send it to ASWFJ07 at gmail.com. Okay, Wait, one, one more time. Okay. ASWFJ07 at gmail.com or you can visit imdem.org. Okay. And imdem.org, that's your website? Yes, that's my brand. That's your brand. Yes. Look at you. <laughs> so, for kids at home right now who maybe have lost someone or have experienced death, what could you share with them that would really, you know, kind of maybe give them some, some, some steps to take? Well, when I started my brand, it's I am them, which means I am my youth. Mm -hmm. Letting them know no matter what you go through or where you come from, you have potential. And so we sell a lot of shirts, so you get a lot of young people that wear the shirts. So I feel like the number one step is pray. Mm -hmm. Pray, you know, prayer without work is dead. So I feel like you have to continue to pray. You have to continue to stay focused. And you have to believe in your prayer. It's one thing to pray, and it's another thing to believe in your prayer. Mm -hmm. So I feel like go to counseling. Right. Um, what I've noticed in the African-American community we don't like going to counseling. Right. But I've been laying on people's couches since I was little, okay. telling them my problems. Um, I feel like for the young people, a great doctor is Dr. Grady. Okay. Um, Dr. Grady, he's at 21st Century, and he's so great. Like, he's, he's good. And I feel like it's people like him that help young people like me mm -hmm. go on, you know? So I feel like stick to counseling and pray and get a relationship with God and get a journal and write your vision out and your feelings out each and every day. So journaling every day really helps you? Yes. I have um, like five journals from when I was little. They're tore up now. From when I was little. And then um, I keep using them and I go back and I look. And it's really a blessing. It really is. Okay, so you get to see how you've grown and how you've changed. As a person, yes. Awesome. So tell me about your mom. My mom is my best friend. I love my mom. That's. That's the person who's really got me through. You know, me and my mom, we have a up and down relationship. But I think all teens have an up and down relationship with their mom. Absolutely. But I think if it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't know the value of self preservation. Okay, you gotta survive. So I think that's my mom, that's my girl. She she helped me get to where I'm at. Okay, well shout out to mom. She's in the Bahamas right now, but she'll hear this later. All right, well shout out to mom. Enjoy the Bahamas. <laughs> we got this. Don't worry about it. I got her. She's cool. <laughs> Okay, so what do you have coming up? How do people get in contact with you? How do they book you? How do they see you? Well, everyone can visit imdem.org, and you can purchase merchandise, my shirts, my buttons, and everything that's purchased goes to my nonprofit organization, okay. and you receive a tax ID exempt receipt All that right. you can use to write off on your taxes. So you can visit imdem.org, and okay. you can book me on there. You can learn about my you can learn about me. You can see what I do. I update it like almost every day. All right. So when people reach out, do you actually respond? Do you interact yes, with them? Yes, I respond with it. Like I check my email like six times a day. Okay. <laughs> so you, I come back real fast, and if I don't, it's like a day later. Okay. So usually about twenty four hours yes. later. I don't like when people wait too long to text me back. So. All right. So can they follow you on Facebook? Of course. My Facebook name is Hope ASW, and my Instagram name is Hope underscore ASW. Awesome. Well, time has really flown, 
It is a pleasure you. having you on the show. I want to thank you for coming out. Okay. As always, I am Sadan Long, and we got some stuff coming up. It's that time again, as always. I'm hungry, so I'm going to go grab some Jay's Breakfast Club. All right. You know, get me something to eat. You know, you were also over there recently for an event. Yes, I had an event at Jay's Breakfast Club, and I would like to thank Miss Kelly and all of my sponsors, Miss Sharita from South Shore Nursing Home, Mr. Avery and Miss Alicia from Powell and Coleman Funeral Home, Miss Wackfresh, and Miss Collins from Hair Boutique. They made it possible with the young ladies and the times for the article. All right, and shout out to everybody. And Gary, thank you, Dr. Grady, for being such a great doctor. Don't forget tomorrow at 5 o'clock on this station, New Friendship Baptist Church with Pastor Royce Thompson and the Anointed Voice Choir will be ministering to you. And on Monday, you can run with Rand and kick it with Kim. Truth is Ministries at 7 on this same station. And as always, don't forget to follow me, Sadon Long, S-A-D-O-N. The book God Wants You to Dominate is still available and still burning up the charts. You can go to Amazon or you can go to SadonLong.com and purchase your book. And as always, like I always say, to those who have been given dominion, they were born to dominate. And we're out. Dominate the day God's way. To follow Mr. Sadan Long, go to Sadan on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.